Good evening everyone. Today we have got quite a few new members who have come over here and uh, our idea is to grow the financial opportunities forum <coughs> to give you a brief idea to the newcomers. Uh, this was started in a bear market of 2008. It was a rotary initiative of Rotary Midtown. Our past president uh, Mr. Mohan Lalwani was the one who gave us this inspiration to start with this. Normally all investment clubs and all they take their birth only in bull markets. When everything is going up everyone is excited. We did something different because our idea was not to capitalize on the bull market but as true Rotarians our idea was that can we share our professional expertise with our fellow Rotarians. So it started with a Rotary initiative. It's picked up and now we have got permission from our president to open the membership to other uh, professionals in this uh, field as well as other Rotarians. And this is not about giving tips or telling you what to buy or what to sell. It's all about the wisdom of investing. Combining it with value investing and behavioral finance, we feel that we are trying to bridge the missing link through the study of behavioral finance. This evening I am going to be talking about some of the behavioral biases that make us bad investors. Now these behavioral biases are nothing but the shortcut our mind takes when making decisions. So these are known as mental heuristics. Why do we give tips at a restaurant? What does the acronym tip stand for? To ensure prompt service. Correct? Then why do we give it? after the dinner or after the meal. Actually we should be giving tips at the beginning of the meal. Now these are the biases which we have to understand in ourselves and at the same time understand these biases in others and then you can benefit out of other people's biases especially when it comes to money and the financials. Now, Investing is very simple. Buy quality companies at a good price and hold them for a long period of time. If this is so simple, why do a lot of people lose money in the stock markets? Why can't people do something which is as simple as that? Buy a good company, a good business, hold on to it for some time you have paid a good price for it, sooner than later the market will realize that the fair value of this stock is so much. If everyone could do that, then life would be very simple, at the same time it will be very boring. Most of the investors are not able to even beat the index, even by doing this. Now what is the reason for this? <clears throat> Success in investing is all about our behavior. Investor return and investment returns are two very different things and the gap which exists over there is because of the behavioral biases and this is what today we are going to understand. Now, there are different types of behavioral biases and the fact that we are not able to capitalize on the behavioral biases is because our brain is hardwired with certain things which we believe or certain things which we just follow blindly like giving tips at the end of the meal or 
because of certain customs that we believe that this is the only right way to do it. And this wiring in our brains does not allow us to take the right financial decisions. So we come to the first bias. What is this? Confirmation bias. It is our tendency to always look at data which confirms with our point of view. We sadly do not look at anything which is conflicting our own confirmations. Now there is a pack of cards, I mean uh, four, uh, this thing, uh, there, there is a vowel on one side of these cards, there are four cards. If vowel on one side, then it must have an even number on the other side. Now test the rule with only two cards. Which would you test? Which two cards would you take to test? Nine, nine and X. X. A and nine. A and nine. Two, two X. If there is a vowel on one side, then there is an even number on the other side. Normally what would happen is what everyone is thinking about is it should be A and two because if there is a vowel. Now that is our normal mind will tell us. But one answer which we got is A and 9 because to test the rule we have to look at an odd figure also otherwise we are not testing the rule. So most of you people if you have this in your mind that A and 2 is right it is again you are suffering from confirmation bias because you are only confirming what you want. You are not testing the rule. And today in real life situations the idea is how do we test the rule. <clears throat> now what are the current confirmation biases in place today? Economic recovery is at sight. So now what would you do? You would normally look at everything which confirms that the economic recovery is there. So even when you are reading newspapers, if there is something which tells you good about the economy, you will tend to look at that. And if someone tells you that there is something wrong with the economy, you will be able to safely omit it. Narendra Modi to be the PM, I think that is already in the air. So now what you will be saying, if you believe that BJP will get measured and Namo is going to be the PM, you will look at every literature and opinion polls which is confirming to your thing. That is why when we read at newspapers, you are getting fed up, fed with only this sort of information. Stock markets going up, Gujarat based stocks going up, you know Namo will come. So what happened, he is close to Adanis, he is close to Ammanis. So normally with your mind what would happen that this thing you will do, go on looking at Adani stocks or uh, uh, Ambani stocks and we have seen with Adani stocks the way they have been going up. It is because one is the recency bias and the other is that you are confirming that if Modi is going to be the PM and Gujarat stocks are going to benefit. Now how would this confirmation bias affect? the investors. Investors, if you are suffering from conformity bias, you are left in the dark for any negative developments which are happening. <coughs> Stocks touching 52 week high, you hear that now quite often. When investors believe in strongly in the predetermined screens such as stocks breaking 52 week high, Confirmation bias is at work. Investors will only use 
this information which confirms their belief and now they will be totally blind to the belief that a stock which has reached 52 week high is an expensive stock and you cannot be investing into that stock. This is normally, uh, this is going up, this is going up, so everyone starts chasing it. Secondly, employees overweight on stocks of companies they work for. Most of the time, the employees believe that if they are working in a company, they have more knowledge about the company and it confirms that they are uh, working in the right company. And so what they do is, they have undiversified portfolios which are heavily weighted on stocks of companies which they work. After this we come to the confirmation bias is the recency bias. What is recency bias? Letting recent events cure perceptions of the future. Today what is happening with all of us? This is also known as the availability bias. We are making decisions based on the readily available information. You will open the TV channel, it will be only about BJP and Kejriwal. <coughs> These two things are always at the top of your mind. BJP is winning, Kejriwal is trying to defend him, I mean uh, to uh, they saying oppose him. These are only the stories which are there in the market. So what happens is, let us see some of the examples of a recency bias. <clears throat> when you are in a bull market, you will always believe that the bull market is going to go on and on. Similarly, if you are in a recession, like we were about two years back, we are always believing that this is going to go on and on forever. Because every time, why is this happening? Because the information which flows to us is either positive or negative depending upon the mood of majority of the people. Do you remember something about India shining? BJP thought India is shining, India is shining. When we went to parties or functions, we only talked about India shining, India shining. Only we knew that India was not shining when BJP lost the elections and Congress came to power. This was a very strong recency effect. <clears throat> the global meltdown. After 2008, everyone was so scared that everyone was wondering whether the next meltdown will come within a couple of years or not. And because of that sentiment, you had a negative sentiment going on all the way till 2014. And normally, this is a blue chip stock. I have heard so many times people talking about, no, no, I only invest into blue chip stocks. Ask them what is a blue chip stock? A blue chip stock is only stock which is every day talked about in the newspapers. Everyone is talking about it. The markets open with that. That is only a blue chip stock. Once upon a time, all these were blue chip stocks. Markets used to open with them. And today nobody even hears about this stock. I have just taken a handful of this. I can make 50 charts like this. In a market, at every point, there are different leaders, different type of operators, different types of FIs, and when that trend changes, everything changes. <clears throat> now this availability bias has different types of variations. Retrievability, that is information which can be retrieved most easily. Which party will win in the forthcoming elections? What is the information you can retrieve fast? BJP. So investors will buy, uh, they are saying buy stocks of companies which are most talked about because they advertise or they are fads or fancies in the market. The same is the case with mutual funds. 
just now mutual funds which are talked about which advertise they are the most talked about by the investors because most of the funds who are really doing well they are not spending any money on advertising and as we rightly know advertise goods are not sellable that's why they have been always there. they have to go on advertising <clears throat> now categorize categorization akin to representative bias or the home bias if you are in india you are always looking at indian stocks if you are in the us you are always looking at us stocks this is natural for any sort of investor to really go ahead with what is nearer and what information is readily available now if i tell you where would you like to invest the information you get about india makes you confident that india is where i should invest now this is typically known as the home bias <clears throat> that's why people who are very patriotic they would always invest into their countries similarly people who are against killing they would never invest into non vegetarian companies so you have different types of biases and this category goes into the recency bias then narrow range of experience people who are in the technology sector would always believe that technology is the right sector to go <coughs> those who are in the steel sector will have their portfolio skewed into the steel sector and the last one is resonance which resonates with one's personality if you are a very thrifty person you are more likely to be an investor into value stocks you will not pay expensive prices for growth stocks you will not trade so it depends upon your personality now the current recency biases how do they exist around us is important the current recency availability wave is the bjp wave it's across we don't know whether it's right or wrong but it is there congress sure to lose is also a recency bias economy reviving we don't know whether it's really reviving or not just because the stock markets are going up they are supposed to be the barometer of an economy so if they are going up necessarily does not mean that the stock market is reviving and kedriwal's popularity is fast fading this is every day it comes in the newspapers if today also just now in the evening was going through in varanasi also someone threw ink on him and all now we don't know exactly whether is fading or not but we are fed with this sort of information and we are more likely to make our decisions based on this readily availability heuristics thirdly we come to the backfiring effect when presented with information that goes against our view points you don't know you not only reject it but you also double on your original view current backfiring effects voters and the candidates kumar vishwas <coughs> uh, this thing jagan reddy kumar vishwas get beaten up in amrit it was all across and investors started tweeting because of the sympathy wave jagan reddy has become so popular because he was 16 months in jail narendra modi why is he so popular how backfiring effect is working on him because in last 10 to 11 years he has been the beating boy of the congress as well as the press and that has created a very big backfiring effect in him 
Similarly, investors rushed to buy FTL and MX shares after the NSCL scam broke down. Of course, in this situation, there were too many reasons because there are too many greedy people in the market. They will just go that thinking that something will change. So the backfiring effect started and people started chasing these stocks. Anchoring bias. This is when you let one piece of irrelevant information govern your thought process. I want to ask you a question. What is the population of Mumbai? Is it greater or less than 20 million? Greater or less? Simple question, correct? Greater. Less. Anybody? Greater or less? Anyway. Okay. How much is the population of? Now let's see this thing. Greater, you said, how much is the population of Bombay? 22. 22. 12. 15. How much? 27. 27. Now, why a lot of people went on telling something which is near to 20? Actually, it is about 12.4 million. It's about 12.4. But because I just put that 20 figure over there, so you all started, they think, uh, they think, uh, talking about a figure which was next to 20 and this is also happening this is also going to happen when you are going to be voting also because that anchoring effect is going to be there with this sort of information coming to you investor behavior due to anchoring it comes with your purchase and sell decisions you have seen a stock price at a certain rate and you want to buy it and if you have to buy it if it is more than that you cannot buy it similarly if you want to sell it if it is more than what you want to I mean less than what you want to you can't sell it brand names act as an anchor if you have a strong Hindustan liver not many people could exit before the downturn happened because they were all anchored to Hindustan liver how can something go wrong with Hindustan liver how could something go wrong with reliance power? These were the different anchors which were there in people's mind. Index movements. Just now, <coughs> index, you have seen that index has touched a high. Now, if you have to sell something, you will always wait for the index to touch that. Your mind will tell you because you are already anchored at that rate. So, it will again go up. But it's not necessary that it has to go to that level. Similarly, analysts forecast. Analysts also, when they give forecasts, they are more anchored in the past quarter or the past year. They will only give you a variance, like you, uh, what you gave the variance for, for the 20 million population. 10% to and fro, you will only give that much. Similarly, are the analysts, that's why don't totally rely on the analyst forecast. And this is what happens with junk stocks. Junk stocks are there. You take a beating in junk stocks and then you swear that when the market recovers, one thing is that you're going to get rid of these stocks. Market recovers. You are not able to get rid of those stocks. One is, then you look at uh, I had bought it at this price, so you know I'll wait for that price because the market is slowly inching up. But in a bear market, those shares were also not sellable. But this anchoring effect will not allow you to get rid of junk stocks. <clears throat> you get anchored to an idea. The fair price of stock is more than what they are currently paying. Everyone feels who has bought a stock that they have paid a much more lesser price than what the market is. Exit polls <coughs> depict the current recency effect in our country. The exit polls are only a result of the availability bias which is there. Everyone is thinking the same thing. So exit polls actually have no meaning. <coughs> 
BJP winning with a majority, economy to revive. What is anchor? Anchor is your BJP because Congress has really not this thing done well in governance. And what is the result you are expecting? That of all the ills of this economy will be sorted out just when BJP comes to power. It just cannot happen. But just now there is hope with everyone. <clears throat> now, anchor is BJP win, economy to recover. So now how is BJP using this anchor to its benefit? Every day you read in the papers, someone is joining BJP, someone is joining BJP, all the allies are joining it. They are all anchored now to BJP. Now ideology does not matter. It's BJP, BJP. So they have got anchored and all the political parties, they think. <clears throat> Varanasi candidature of Modi, what is it using? It's using BJP, is using the Hindu, uh, Hindutva anchor in UP. That's why he's over there. It's a great anchor for them. It's impossible for them to do badly over there. Now we come to the framing effects. Reacting differently to the same information depending upon how it has been presented. Uh, I can say this now because this was PPFS PMS performance from 1996 to 2012. PPFS PMS returned 19.18% per annum to its shareholders. And the Sensex had returned only 14.18%. So PM beat the index by 5%. Does it excite you much? It doesn't excite you. 5% may they think, but what happened? Now, the same information. If I say 5 lakhs at the same rate was uh, compounding, it was converted to 82 uh, they think, lakhs. As regards the Sensex, 41 lakhs then I can say it beat it by 100%. It's a framing effect. It's how you frame your information. And today across you are seeing a lot of framing effects taking place. Take points on this. Index surges to the highest level in seven years. Index has not gone anywhere in seven years. Both the statements are true. Both the statements. But if you use the first statement, it creates an impact. And newspapers are using the first statement. <clears throat> Current framing effects are the way media shows the political rallies. It's up to them how to take the view of the people over there. You are just seeing the TV. You don't know of this thing. In, the, in photography, there are ways and means how you can show a lot of people and how you can show less people. Framing effect, Kejriwal and his muffler, the Amadmi, it's a framing effect for you. <clears throat> Namo the Chaiwala, it's another framing effect. For you frame, no, okay, he was just a tea vendor. Then why is Kejriwal taking over Modi? Why is he going there? Framing effect, because along with him, the frame would be that he's taking over Modi. Kumar Vishwas with Rahul Gandhi. It's a framing effect. Arnab Goswami's prime shows everyone must be looking at. He is every day using framing effects. If he does not allow, want to allow a person to speak, he will go on asking that question. Because, and he is totally controlling the TV. I don't know if everyone saw it yesterday that, uh, who is that? The Ram Sena chief. Mutalik. Mutalik. Mutalik is saying something, he is asking a question, he is saying, no, 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 you are doing this, you can do that. Continuously, for 15 minutes, he was doing this. Hmm? Yeah, times now. Yeah, times now. Now, these are all framing. These are all framing effects. Now, <clears throat> how this framing effect is to be best understood when we are looking at the markets. Now, today you have a doctor. A doctor can only become good in his profession is if he reads more, if he is in tune with the latest technology, 
and if he practices more operations and all he will become better and better. So is the case with a lawyer that in our life a lawyer when he reads more uh, case studies when he practices more the more he does something the better he becomes. In investing also we have the same frame in mind the more we read the more magazines we read the more people we listen to more news which we get we will become better and better the more balance sheet which we see will become better and better. So the frame which we have is tennis being played against a wall if you have started playing tennis against a wall you first the wall is there over there you just hit the ball over there the first five six balls would go astray but then slowly you will get the neck of it. So you the more you practice the better you will become. So we are all tuned with this sort of a frame in mind. But unfortunately this frame is very different when investing. If we are thinking that with more knowledge and all we become better investors that is not the case. We are using a wrong frame because in investing you are competing with different investors on the other side. Investors with inside information, sophisticated institution investors who have the money power, who have the power to really move the markets and investors with more knowledge and control. So your frame should be this frame. It is you are playing tennis against a better player. This should be the frame of mind when you are looking at investing. So just gathering more knowledge and all. Now even I was thinking like this I took up to behavioral finance because I found this was the missing link that how do we control our emotions and how do we benefit from other people's emotions to be successful in the stock markets. Stock market is not a zero sum game. All of us are holding shares of state bank of India. The current price is 2000. I sell my shares to Mr. Sudhit Parekh. He buys 100 shares from me. The price goes down to 1000 rupees. So I should be happy. Correct because I have sold my shares. He should be sad. Then what would happen to all of you? I did an action. He did an action there was a reaction you guys did not do anything but your value has gone down. Now this is the beauty of the stock market that is why we are not able to understand the stock market because our frame of the stock market is different. You did not do anything and the tight turn and you also lost money. So we come to the other one which is the overconfidence bias. Too many people overvalue what they are not and undervalue what they are. In its basic form it can be summarized as unwarranted faith in one's intuitive reasoning, judgments or cognitive abilities. Studies and experiments have proved that people always overestimate their predictive abilities and the precision of information they have been given. You have two types of overconfidence biases. One is prediction open that is of knowledge. Most of the chartered accountants are financial planners, financial advisors to most of the investors. This is overconfidence bias. They believe that because they are a chartered accountant, because they are in finance, they have the ability to advise people. But that is never the case. Stock markets are very different than financial accounting. <coughs> Certainty or confidence. <coughs> people display certainty or confidence in everyday life situations and it is thus carried to the investment arena. 
people have tend to have too much confidence in the accuracy of their judgments and this is a fallacy they equate the quantity of the information which comes to them as quality there's a very big difference between quantity and quality and this is what did in the technology boom <coughs> where people lost millions of rupees because of the core confidence that the new economy is coming and the bricks and mortar is dead it was over confidence in the knowledge as well as ability behavior investor behavior due to over confidence what can you do trade excessively and as long as you are winning you believe that it is your skill and ability reliance power ipo all of you must have invested in that everyone was over confident about their ability to sell on listing everyone knew that it was a high price stock everyone was anchored to the grey market premium nobody knew from where the grey market premium came but everyone was anchored to the grey market premium they thought well i know the stock is really not worth so much but as when it is listed i will sell it off so what happened was everyone was over confident of selling everyone over confidently came to sell and nobody could sell because the prices just started going down long term capital management it had its phds nobel prize winners and their ability the skill it was unmatched it was a great team but they went bankrupt bankrupt because of over confidence not because of anything else <clears throat> that's why investors always underestimate the downward risk and because of this they hold on to their undiversified portfolio current over confidence is bias economy improving fi buy and then the day the fi is come and sell they tell hey fi has came and sold but why are they buying anybody who buys will ultimately sell bjp to get a majority and mr narendra modi to become pm this is the over confidence they saying the current over confident bias is there gujarat based stocks will always do well stock markets are just shooting up which will happen for some time because of these biases we'll know everything on the 16th may now this is another bias which hinders our financial decision making we attribute our success to skills but our failures to random acts or we blame others for it effect is we are inability to learn from our mistakes credit of all successes would lead to over confidence because if you take credit for all the successes which you have slowly you will become over confident and over optimistic and because of over confidence you will start taking undue risks because over confident people or people who are self attributed they will always like to listen to what they want to hear this is what happens when you lose a pot oh luck i was very unlucky if you win oh skill i am skillful stock market the same things are happening let's see current self attribution biases i have taken these examples from the current situations because then it makes this subject which is very dry interesting and secondly these current things help you to relate with yourself so the learning becomes much more faster arvin kejriwal he takes credit for all the successes successes but then goes on blaming for everything else he went to the extent of even blaming the media they will put you into jail when anything does not fit into his category of things he will go on blaming subrata rao 
he was so overconfident. He thought that he had four lakh employees working for him. He thought that he is the king of Lucknow, whatever that place is. That even he didn't even heed the warrant of the Supreme Court. Hmm. That means he believed so much in his ability that nothing can happen to him. <coughs> Ultimately, he had to go behind bars. Mutual funds. Up till now, they were always blaming the economy and everything. And now all of a sudden, they have started coming out with schemes and all. All of a sudden, they are now telling that this is our performance, this is our performance. <coughs> so, now, the performance has happened not because they had done anything, because the tide has actually turned. Investors are today overly excited about the gains. As I told you, the tide has turned. So even if your portfolios have started doing well, there is no reason to believe that it was your skill or your smartness which has done it. At least keep that humility. The tide has turned. When the tide turns and when it is there for, uh, to stay, then you will really know what are good stocks which you have bought and what are the bad stocks which are hurting you. How many times have you heard people say, yeah, I always knew it, after an event has passed. <coughs> this is hindsight bias. <clears throat> when you have hindsight bias, you tend to overestimate the accuracy of your own predictions. See, you cheat yourself. After an event has happened, you tell, take credit for it that you always knew it. That's why unpredictable de uh, this thing developments always embarrass people. But when you have a hindsight bias, it elevates that embarrassment. Understand, underestimate the uncertainty preceding the event and underrating the unmaterialized outcome. When you have a hindsight bias, if an event has happened, what about the other events which would have happened or not happened? You never look at them. You don't have a holistic picture. You only are looking at the trees. You are not looking at the forest. <clears throat> this prevents people from learning from their mistakes. Leads people to exaggerate the quality of their foresight. Because with hindsight bias, you know what, uh, what quality do you have for your foresight. <clears throat> Implication for the investors. People fool themselves of the predictive capability. They achieve such crystal clear clarity only after the event. When funds do badly, investors assume that every development was inevitable. However, how did the manager not anticipate it? The 2008 global meltdown, the real estate and the infrastructure bust. When per, uh, funds perform well, The clarity of hindsight obscures the possibility that the fund manager's strategy could have benefited from good timing of a or luck. Consider the wisdom attributed to managers of aggressive growth tech funds during the technology boom. There was this very well-known fund manager. He was responsible for buying a lot of tech stocks in the early stages. His fund really did well. And that time he thought that he knew everything about the technology sector. To the extent that he used to go to some analyst meet and even if the management would give a warning signal for earnings, he would argue that the, the warning signal is wrong. Because his past performance was playing so much in his mind. Today, uncertainty prevails in the economy, market and politics. Now we will know this thing only on 16th of March, thing, how hindsight bias had worked. This is something which we cannot say today, only 16th hour. Then we come to the halo effect. If we see a person in good light, it, it is difficult subsequently to dark that, darken that light. Anil Ambani. 
all these companies, the Ada Group, all these companies, Ali Nambani has got a good brand name. But most of his companies, I would say 80% of these companies are doing badly. But still, the hello effect of Mr. Anil Ambani is there. Anna Azare, hello effect. Delhi was successful. The hello effect came in. Afterwards, Mumbai was a failure. Then again, Delhi was a failure. But till today also, there is no Anna Azare, Anna Azare. Of course, now very few people have started taking his name. Same is the case with Rahul Gandhi. Hello effect. It's still there. UTI, Unit Trust of India, it's just one another fund today with hardly any of its scheme really making money for the shareholders. But the past legacy of Unit Trust of India, Unit Trust of India, of course the hello effect will fade over a period of time, but it does rub in and we have to be very careful in the investing world that we don't make decisions because of this hello effect. Investors get anchored and don't adjust insufficiently because of the halo effect. You have skewed portfolios due to status quo bias. And you always buy top performing funds because of the halo effect. A top performing fund may not be a top performing fund or you are not paying the right price for it. Buy fads and fancies in the market. Remember, we had a time where <coughs> Technology sector, 99-2000, all the technology stocks were going over. Those, those were fads and fancies in the market. Then in 2007, real estate, infrastructure and power, they were the fads in the market. That's how Reliance Power, DLF and all, they came to the market to capture the fads and fancies of the market. When the fads and the fancies went away, people had fads and uh, they saying fancy losses. <coughs> So be careful of going with the herd mentality or buying feds and fences in the market. Then we come to this illusion of control. You can call it being arrogance or overconfidence. There is so much power and honor is to surrender. Learn to go this thing, let go. People always want to control things. Parents want to control their children. Employers want to control their employees. It's doing everywhere because it's one of the worst <coughs> biases which you can have. Because only it robs you away from your own peace. It's a tendency of human beings to believe that they can control or at least influence outcomes when in fact they cannot do a damn thing about it. <clears throat> trade more than what is prudent. That's how investors believe. If you have made something, you are overconfident that it was because of your abilities that you have been able to make a profit. And then you go on trading more and more. Unable to take help of pro professionals. In India, it is so true that nobody wants to pay a professional. They just want everything free or they themselves become professionals. Use limit orders. When you give to uh, this thing, limit orders to your broker, what are you doing? You think you are in control, that you know that it will happen or this will not happen. And this makes you excessively overconfident and you can suffer from overconfidence bias. Current pointers for illusion of control. Congress was so accustomed to controlling everything that the, when the scams started coming one by one, they lost control of that. That illusion of control was not there and they were not able to control anything and it really boomeranged into the reputation going down and down. You think Subrata Rao would not have been advised by his lawyers to appear before the Supreme Court? But he had an illusion of control that I will be able to control all events, nothing can go wrong with me. Any sane lawyer and he they definitely had the right lawyers, they would have told him. Please, it's a Supreme Court warrant. You cannot avoid it. But this was illusion of control. Anna's flop show in Mumbai. Delhi was a great success. So he thought that he could control anywhere. He'll be able to control crowds. And it flopped over here. Similarly, Adwani sells. Jaswan Singh rebels and then starts this. 
it's all they are all were suffering from an illusion of control and it's all going down it's going back on their face kejriwal delhi win made him go to the lok sabha elections again illusion of control now there was this small wheel town <coughs> a man marches to the town square every day in the evening at 6 o'clock with a checkered flag and a trumpet he goes over there holds his flag for 5 minutes and blows the trumpet and then he'll come home to the delight of his family for dinner so one day a policeman asked him what are you doing blowing the trumpet and doing the flags like this he saying yes i'm keeping the elephants away policeman said there are no elephants in smallville town i think that means i'm doing a great job <laughs> this is basically how that illusion of control is there <clears throat> now we have escalation of commitment throwing bad money after good money which is also known as sunk cost fallacy <coughs> people blindly double up on their original commitment because the ego gets tied to the commitment and then you start throwing good money after bad money averaging cost of purchases is one thing sir if you bought a stock is really good and when it goes down you buy it more there's nothing to worry about it but most of the time what would happen is when your ego is tied to yours when it goes down you believe that you cannot go wrong so you go on buying more avoid that spending on repairs you use the car for 5 to 7 years then it's time to throw out an asset because it has used its i mean you have used the useful life of an asset but we go on spending in for repairs and throwing good money after a bad asset npas and banks they have to ask the question whether when a borrower goes for asking for more money the question should be does this business require the money they ask the question especially the psu bank apna bahut purana client hai so we should give it to him that's sunk cost fallacy government projects lot of steel cement has already reached the uh, site bureaucratic delays have taken 5 to 7 years the project has become unviable but still the show goes on current situations of sunk cost fallacy understand kejriwal's efforts to keep the fire of corruption burning delhi gadkari vadera ambani namo then ultimately media you see he wanted to keep that the thing and he thought that he had a great ace up his sleeve so one by one he had to use that but he was not realizing that he was only using a wrong card because every day people wanted different stories so what he did was the same corruption plank he started putting in different people and the last straw on the camel's back was when he ab- accused the media of this secular card congress and its allies communalism has been a slogan of for all the political parties to flog bjp devoid of new ideas they all are using the same card only communism communism but today you see times have changed people want governance people are not looking at communism and that's where namo has really they saying in his bhr speech when he had talked about okay you are they saying you want to fight hindu muslims you want to fight or you want to do they saying you want to stay out of poverty that was the most important part mutual fund industry going through tough times they want penetration so the regulator asked open branches invest education accept cash hook or crook now this is again sunk cost fallacy times have changed today you have internet today there are ways and means how you can this saying reach to your customers you can have ways and means where people can come and invest in mutual fund instead of doing that they want to go by the only old way the banks used to do is even the bank branches is an idea whose time has gone there are different new banks which are coming in they are doing things in a very different way and lastly we come to the risk perception bias in order to eliminate one risk 
you expose yourself to a potentially much more higher risk. Now this is very evident in the stock markets. Now let us see if you can understand this example properly. After 9-11, 9-11 was a salient accident. Everyday planes don't go into the building and crash. It just happened that day. After that it has never happened. Now, <clears throat> after 9-11, more people started traveling by cars than planes. And if you saw the statistics, there were more road accidents and people have died by road accidents rather than plane accidents. Now to reduce your weight, you have to take care of your health, exercise and the power is much more better. But still some people take weight reducing pills, not considering the risk which it offers. So in our daily life also we are take, uh, taking so many decisions where to avoid one risk we are taking something which is much more bigger. <clears throat> now we all are against corruption, but do we want novices like AAP with an idea or we want good governance? That is the question we need to ask ourselves. Which is a bigger risk from these two? I am not advocating any political messages or anything, but I am just trying to understand the perception of risk when we are going to make these political decisions. <clears throat> Similarly, is BJP in Hindutva a bigger risk or bad governance a bigger risk? Your economy has gone downtown, I mean they are saying down the road, which is a bigger risk? We have to understand that. <clears throat> Coalition politics, we have seen how it has taken our economy into doldrums. Would we not prefer stability? How would we want to vote? Do we want, for, we want to vote for stability or we want everyone again coming and ruining our economy? <coughs> Today, the same thing is happening. The government is coming out with tax-free bonds. The perceived riskless safety bonds, 8.5% to 9% interest. People are really getting into this. In fact, I believe that 10 years down the line, they will realize the real meaning of perceived. Yes. What kind of risk do you perceive in the tax free bonds 10 years down the line? No, no, what I am telling you, the, it's not the risk, the risk perception that if you would have taken an equity they think at this, you would find that they are uh, saying, why did I become risk averse? In terms of returns properly. Returns properly, yeah. It is not that they are risky. But just now you are feeling that they are not at all risky. But 10 years down the line, when you see your equity returns, you will be thinking, well, they are saying, I should have made that choice. Not I beg your pardon? They are not guaranteed by government, right? No, no, they are not guaranteed. But just now everyone feels that be safe, let me put my money over there. Hmm? In spite of the not yeah, yeah, yeah. They have with good PSUs and all. It's not that your money will go, but the return just now eight and a uh, eight and a half to nine percent return seems very good for you. They think with your equities, you'll see much more better returns. That's what I mean. Anyway, if no more questions, please join us for yes. Do we conclude that? Uh -huh. That stock market is as difficult to know what as difficult as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thank you, uh, this thing, everyone, and please join us for cocktails and dinner. And uh, once again, when we are in an informal meeting, we can always discuss. And my PMS results, which I showed you, were due to. Our fund manager also of our mutual fund, Rajiv Thakkar. It was because of his efforts that I was able to show this slide to you guys. So now if you want to pick your brains, I mean pick his brains now for what stocks and all, please go there because I am tired of talking. Thank you. Let him come and say. Yes? Let him come and say. What will he say? What stocks? <laughs>
No, no, no. We are not. We are, we are no tips. This you came in late, but this is not an uh, thing for giving tips. It's for the wisdom of investing. Better we have a drink. They are teaching you how to fish. Uh -huh, yeah, <laughs> teaching you fishing, so that you don't go to the fisherman and buy a fish. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.